What is the recent evidence that underscores that point that didn't already exist six or eight months ago? Why aren't you continuing to stay in it unless there's some kind of political interest in it for you? I'm, I'm obviously going to get reelected in my riding. I'm not worried about And how much responsibility do you bear for the lack of success for your party? So do you not feel like you bear any responsibility? Do you bear any responsibility, though? Is that at all your responsibility? Why are you still keeping them in power? I, how can you ever support them going forward after saying that? Do you put your own interests ahead of Canadians? You have told Canadians they are weak, they are selfish, that they have abandoned the very people who put them in office. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to see you. Thank you so much for making the time. My pleasure. Uh, Mr. Singh, in your video yesterday and in the comments you made today, you called the Liberals and the government more specifically weak and selfish. You said they've let Canadians down, they've abandoned Canadians, and that they uh, have led to endless disappointment for Canadians. How can you ever support them going forward after saying that? That's a good question. Well, we've, ter we've torn up the agreement with Justin Trudeau. I've torn that up. And I know that that means election is more likely than before. And it was really clear to me, there's mounting evidence that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals were just too weak to take on corporate greed. They were too beholden to corporate interests to stop big corporate grocery stores and corporate landlords from ripping people off. And frankly, they're too weak to stand up to the real threat of conservatives under Pierre Polyev who want to cut our healthcare system and cut pensions. So for all those reasons, we've ripped up the agreement and we're putting to Canadians the choice for the next elections between New Democrats are going to give people hope or Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives who want to cut. But ripping up the agreement is just ending the formality of it. You explicitly said, for example, in that video that you will continue to consider whether or not to support the government on matters of, of uh, confidence on a case by case basis. Again, I'll put the question to you. You have told Canadians they are weak, they are selfish, that they have abandoned the very people who put them in office. You just described a host of reasons why you don't want to be a part of any formal agreement. How can you reconcile for Canadians watching now that you're still willing to vote with them and keep them in power on a case-by-case -case basis? Wow, that's, that's a great question. Well, I don't know what the votes are going to be, so we'll see what the vote is, and I'll make a decision based on what comes before me using the lens of, is this in the best interest of Canadians? In this episode, I want to talk about how to avoid answering a question that you don't want to answer. Uh, it depends on what the votes are and depends on what comes before us. But we know that this does certainly mean that an election is more likely and that election will be about a choice. People are frustrated and done with the Liberals and Justin Trudeau. So it'll be between Pierre Polyev and the Conservative cuts or New Democrats hope and building up the programs that people need. I have to also ask you, Mr. Singh, why now? And in particular, you know, I've done so many interviews with you. I'm, I'm sure you're sick of them where I ask you the question, like, this is the way in which you're describing the government. Why are you still keeping them in power? I don't understand what changed, uh, you know, saliently over the last number of days or weeks that led you to make this decision now versus, let's say, six months ago. You point to corporate greed, for example, particularly in the grocery sector. Food prices were at their highest over a year ago, and the government wasn't doing much even then. Why didn't that force you to make this decision? Is this more about really polling and your electoral chances? And some would accuse in the Conservatives your pension. <laughs> Not at all. First of all, let's put that to rest. That's a, a lie of by being propagated by Pierre Polyev. Why the f*** you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Who's, uh, I think, got his full pension when he was like 31. So I don't know. He wants to cut people's pensions. Speaking of pensions, he wants to cut seniors' pensions. I mean, that's, that's what we should be talking about. The fact that we want to defend and strengthen people's pensions and he wants to cut them. I think people should know about that. That wasn't the question. <laughs> Uh, but when it comes to decision, we always knew that at some point we would have to make this decision, that we weren't going to stay in this forever, and we would make that decision based on a uh, whole host of factors. What we saw was that we got a lot of things done. We were able to get the dental care program out the door, pharma care steps had been passed in Parliament. So a lot of the work that we wanted to do is done. And it became very clear, more and more evidence mounted that the Liberals were simply too beholden to corporate interest. What's the evidence? And, with, with, and do, that's with due not going to make the needs of Canadians. With due respect, what is the recent evidence that underscores that point that didn't already exist six or eight months ago? I would say the, the approach towards working people when it comes to the rail workers. I, I was really concerned about that. I raised those concerns very publicly that these workers were just asking for more safety and that CP and CPKC and CN Rail 
in a lot of ways, what looks like a collusion of timing this together, uh, they locked out the workers, first of all. The workers weren't even on strike. They locked out the workers, and the workers weren't even able to negotiate before they were forced to binding arbitration. Another example of the Liberals caving to the corporate interests instead of letting workers fight out and get a fair deal at the table. Just that was another example of, of mounting evidence. We got a lot of things done. The Liberals aren't able to do more for people. And we've toned up our agreement, and we're going to go vote to vote. So if they had behaved differently in that labor dispute, would you still be in this agreement? I don't want to uh, deal with hypotheticals. They did what they did, and it became very clear to me that they were no longer able to, to meaningfully tackle the problems that people are going through. You're dodging the question. They've shown again and again, and the evidence has got to the point where we said they cannot take on the major issues of the day. The fact that corporate landlords are rent evicting people, jacking up rents, they're not going to take that on. They're not doing what's necessary, so we tore up the agreement. And the next election, again, is going to be a choice. People want change. They're going to replace Justin Trudeau. Do they choose Pierre Polyev, the conservatives, who want to let big corporations rip off people even more? They're going to put fire on the fuel of corporate greed? Or New Democrats, who are saying, let's make uh, people the priority. Let's protect people from the corporate greed of these large, powerful interests, and let's make sure people get lower rents and lower grocery prices. But again, with great respect, all of the stuff that you lay out, we have been talking about, you and I, you and other politicians, there has been accountability directed at the government and questions about why they aren't doing more on those issues that you talk about, about affordability, about grocery prices, about corporate interests, for over a year. Like, it was particularly difficult for Canadians. I mean, inflation has edged down, but prices are up 20% over the last three years, and they were super high Absolutely. a year ago. My question isn't hypothetical. You are raising the idea that the CN Rail uh, dispute and their handling of it really was, was it a turning point? Like, I, again, I'm not clear why this wasn't a decision you didn't make earlier, unless now you see that your personal interest is better served and you didn't before. Well, like I mentioned, we got work done. We got things done, things completed. It's false. We wanted to make sure dental care was completed um, to at least the second phase include seniors and to, a lot of that program was done over the summer. So that but completed it's not totally a significant done. part of and our And neither agreement. is Pharmacare. And it's so still that before was, the summer. That was really important. This summer, actually, we got the portal. We got some major changes. So we got a lot of work done. Pure fiction. And it became very clear with their approach towards workers in the rail situation that, again, another example of caving to corporate interests. And so we made it very clear that they are no longer able to uh, meaningfully tackle the problems that people are going through. We've torn up the agreement because they're too weak to take on the Conservatives and they're too weak and beholden to corporate interests to stop uh, what is the major concern, what people are going through right now. The high cost of living is being driven by corporate greed and the Liberals aren't doing anything about it. I guess I would just point out that both pharmacare and dental care are not completed in, in the vein that you saw them. There's even still a legislative process that's unfolding where, where pharmacare is concerned. Um, I, I also wanted to ask you about... Well, your on pharmacare, in terms of the legislative process in the House, that's completed. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's the a Senate. Senate vote, which obviously we don't have any influence over. No, but things can happen. You never know. I'm just saying that's not completely done. Um, I, I also it, It's voted in in the House. That bill is done. So you think for sure it's going to happen? You trust the Liberals to make sure it happens? Because, because I think the oh, argument no, you're making is... Oh, they don't do it. That's is, on them. Yeah, but you're, if, the if argument they don't do you... It, if Justin Trudeau doesn't move forward on Pharmacare, that's because Justin Trudeau chose not to. But in terms of but the, the legislative argument tool, you're making, Sure, but the argument you're making to Canadians is essentially you stayed in it as long as you did to get things done. So if those things aren't done, why aren't you continuing to stay in it unless there's some kind of political interest in it for you to move forward? to a different position, which is what the Liberals essentially are accusing you of. They say blatantly, Karina Gold on this dental program last night, you put your own interests ahead of Canadians. Dental care is done. We've got the legislation necessary for it, the program's out the door, and people are getting it. Millions of people have gotten it. And the pharmacare legislation is passed. The anti-scab legislation is passed. Uh, major pieces of our agreement have been completed. We've, we've gotten a lot of work done, important work. And now we're, we're turning the page on that and saying that Liberals are no longer making it, made it clear they're no longer able to do what's necessary to take, tackle the issues of the day. And the issues of the day are the high cost of groceries, high cost of rent, housing and groceries are two major concerns I hear from. The Liberals have shown again and again that they've caved to corporate interests on those two files. And then most recently in the summer, they caved to the corporate interests of these large corporate railroads instead of letting workers get a fair deal. They've made it clear that they're, no, they're not interested in, in tackling these problems. 
we've torn up the agreement with Justin Trudeau. I mean, their argument is that the, a, a whole ton of other workers would have been impacted by uh, a stoppage on, on the rail network, but I, I do take your point. Can I ask you to clarify uh, on the question of the pension? Because it is an argument that the Conservatives are continually using. Uh, are you eligible for a pension in February because of when you were elected in the by-election? And has that factored into your decision-making uh, in all of this, or will it factor into your decision-making in perhaps prompting an election. Can I just get you on the record on that? <gasps> oh my goodness, I love this question. N not at all. It's a ludicrous uh, suggestion. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously gonna get reelected in my riding. I'm not worried about that at all. <laughs> this is a silly argument being bought by conservatives, but it's on purpose. And the reason why Pierre Polyev is doing this because he wants to distract from what he wants to do. He wants to destroy the dental care program for seniors. So for your parents, for your grand grandparents, he doesn't think they deserve to get their teeth looked after. He wants to get rid of this entirely. Not and your fake news. Only that, he also wants to get rid of our universal health care system. He's been very open about that. He doesn't want to see a public health care system. He wants to see it entirely private. So that's what he's distracting from. He knows he's lying, and he knows that he's distracting from the fact that he wants to destroy not only dental care, but our healthcare system as well. Um, we're going to keep on fighting to defend it because we believe in it. We believe no one should have to worry about how much money they have in their pocket to be able to get good quality care in our country. We're going to fight to make sure our healthcare is there for people and we're going to fix it. Uh, one final question for you, uh, you know, for Canadians watching right now, Mr. Singh. Uh, the Prime Minister keeps getting questions about whether he should remain as leader because of where public opinion polling for his party sits. At the same time, while the Liberals have had, you know, dwindling, to say the least, political fortunes, your party has not been able to capitalize on that at all. Your polls have remained fairly stagnant for the last three years. Uh, should people be asking you if you should remain on as the NDP's leader? Are you asking yourself that? And how much responsibility do you bear for the lack of success for your party? We have brought in the biggest expansion of health care in a generation. I'm proud of the work that we've done. I'm running to be prime minister of this country and I'll be leading the party to the next election, absolutely. But that's not what I ask. So do you not feel like you bear any responsibility for being unable to capitalize on the Liberals' fall from grace among Canadians? Uh, we're going to be running to form government in the next election. I'm be running for prime minister. That's not my question. Respectfully, that's not really an answer. Like, do you, are you worried at all about the fact that you haven't Respectfully, been able? Respectfully, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm running for prime minister. I'm running to beat the conservatives. I'm running to make sure that this country has someone that's going to be on their side. And, and I take, I understand what you're saying. I completely, I think Canadians understand that you are going to run to lead the party. Do you bear any responsibility, though, for the hill that that party has to climb in order to be competitive with the Conservatives in the next election? You have framed the choice as very obvious for Canadians and the consequences as very dire for the, if the Conservatives win, but your party has not been able to compete with them. Is that at all your responsibility? Good question. You are a good question. Well, it's a serious fight. There's no question about it. I'm not in any ways going to diminish the, the challenge in front of us. We've got a very big challenge. But it's clear that people are done with the, the Liberals. They're done with Justin Trudeau. And so when people want to replace Justin Trudeau, they're going to have to look into two choices. For federal parties, there's the Conservatives or the New Democrats. They want to change election. They want to get rid of Justin Trudeau, which people tell me they're frustrated with him. There's two choices. Not to say that this, choice is a, a, this challenge is easy by any means. It's a very big challenge. But I want Canadians to know the choice is Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives, who are very open, they're going to cut your pensions, they're going to cut health care, and they're going to let big corporations rip you off. Or New Democrats who want to restore hope, we want to build and strengthen our health care system and your pensions and stop these corporations from ripping you off. That's not easy. I know that's going to be an uphill battle, but that's the choice in front of Canadians. I will leave it there. Mr. Singh, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much.